Hi, I'm Celestine Hart again, and I'm going to talk to you a little bit about some of the stamps that I've been making. I've been having a great time making my own stamps, and so I want to show them to you. I've been making supplies for my art, um, have been as much fun as making the art itself. Uh, first, I borrowed a Teresa Collins stamp maker. And I've had mixed results. Small stamps have been working great, uh, like postage stamp size stamps, for instance. This is a stamp I made, um, and it's I I've had this is not the clearest stamp of it, but it's you know this is after using it maybe one or two times the stamp came out pretty good. Um, here's the actual stamp. Of course I can put this on a backing or something. Uh, so this came out fine but when I went to the larger stamps then I had trouble and I think it's the timing on it that I'm it must need to adjust the time for the larger stamps but um, of course I saw a Facebook posting where people were making stamps from the foam from uh, foam sheets and of course if you go to the store go to stop by the kids section kids art section don't just leave uh, and you'll find great stamps that are this was a dollar store stamp set that was that and I've taken a few stamps out of this set and used them but these are great stamps especially for stamping on your jelly plate etc oh this is these work great um, in addition, in my children's section, I found these sheets that came in a package, and the sheets have a texture to them. It was a stack of sheets, I think it was $8, and you got like 10 sheets, and they all had different textures. I think it was two sheets of each texture, so I cut them out in square shapes for when I wanted corners and squares, and then cut it out in other shapes and I just use these to stamp on my backgrounds and they had a really nice wavy effect which of course I can't find that cheap right now here's the wavy and these work great if you can find these in your craft store I think I found them at Joann's but if you can find these in your craft store get them because you can make all sorts of stamps out of these and they for your, uh, especially if you're into art journaling, they give you beautiful backgrounds. Uh, this is another one that came with that set. And you can't see, there's like little corduroy ridges like corduroy. I've used this one a few times. Little ridges like corduroy. Of course, everybody's seen online where you use corrugated paper and bubble wrap for stamping in your backgrounds. I also saw a video about using uh, rope uh, string on a background. And this is one I made based on the video and I cartridge I own that with Cricut, the Cricut Forever and I use that a lot because that's one of my favorite cartridges that I've bought so far. I don't have a lot of Cricut cartridges. I bought a Cricut, the personal Cricut years ago, used it for a while, put it up and just took it out again recently and I've had so much fun making stamps with it. Here's foam stamps made and it, this was originally when I first started I was just using the regular blade but I made so many stamps that I splurged and bought the deep cut blade and normally I'm not big on buying extra accessories for products that I use but I, I the deep cut blade was definitely worth it because I could cut uh, different things with it and it, it, it did it worked really well. Let me see. Um, some of these, this is forever. This stamp came from uh, is a cutout from forever. No, is from everyday, everyday dress up, paper doll dress up. I'm not sure which one this is from. Probably forever young. I'm not sure what this one's from, but it, you probably can't see it real well because it's pink on pink. But this is a castle which I like this stamp. Basic flower, of course. 
and I use this basic flower in the background here. Um, this, this, I use that basic flower stamp to add a little extra um, design in the background here on this project and on the uh, dress form on this project. I just love the dress form in the forever uh, forever young cartridge. So I've been having a good time with that. Now, this has been my goal of making my own stamps. I've really wanted to take some of the women that I draw, because I like to draw women, and make them into stamps. Here's a woman that I've drawn. Here's some other women I've drawn. And I want to take the basic black and white um, design from these women and use them, which I've kept, and use them for stamps. That's why I wanted to use the uh, Teresa Collins. And when I get that down pat, I will do another video showing you that because I'm determined that I'm going to make that work. But here's one thing I discovered, again, from watching YouTube, and I tell you who told me this if I would remember the names, and I apologize to whoever did the YouTube video, but uh, I'm sure if you YouTube, if you search making your own stamps, that they'd come up as a choice. This is a face, and it's sort of an anime style face. I made this by gluing the uh, foam to this cardstock. And this is heavy cardboard and then I drew I drew the picture of what I wanted on there I did that first and glued it down then cut out every place that I didn't want to keep the reason that you do it in that order instead of cutting it out and then gluing it on the board which is probably a lot easier this gets you that placement and the and you'll find that the placement is more is is the most important thing so if I didn't do that it's easy to glue your eyes in the wrong place your eyebrows in the wrong place and not glue them in exactly where you want them so I found that using my trusty uh, craft blade I got this as a free giveaway at one of the at a conference, I at a uh, conference or something that I went to, and I love this thing, but it was it was great. Um, but uh, this, so this is the face, and then if I stamp this on something, then I can draw whatever I want around the face, hair or whatever design I want, or I could just use this face in a background. This is my cheerleader girl. And I can put in, I can use this stamp and then put in, if it's a happy, if it's for a birthday card, I can put a happy birthday on the, on the shirt or put whatever design I want on the shirt. I can color it in whatever colors. You'll notice that and this time I did this, and I'm going to do this one over another one. This time I did this, what I did, I didn't cut out the features of the face. And um, what I did was draw in the features using my craft knife and going over it with a ballpoint pen to thicken the lines so when I stamp this design and if I can find where I've stamped it it gives it, these lines show up even though they're not cut out completely and this is another design that I used and this one was for, this one is just a blank face, and I can draw in a face, or I can just paint in a blank face, but this, and this scarf, and headdress or scarf, gives me plenty of room if I want to do just some zentangling in the scarf, or if I want to paint the sections in with various colors, it gives me a lot of choices to do there. And 
these stamps have been wonderful to use for um, various projects and you see that they've been used. Um, this one, let me stamp with this one real quick. I've been using my blue so much I think I've messed up my stamp pad so now I do this with red and I still have some blue left on this stamp so that may come through. Now hopefully I don't lose my put something there for it to focus on. I don't want to lose some glare. Um, right here this is uh, what I use on my sheet here protecting my table right now. I have a glass sheet under this and then on top of this and I tape the edges of the glass sheet so that it doesn't cut anybody and then on top of the glass sheet this is just a plain sheet of watercolor paper. Watercolor paper is real shiny and smooth and it works great for jelly painting surprisingly enough that real smooth surface just picks up all the uh, everything you've got on your jelly plate and also for, as a under sheet that I can just throw away under my craft projects. Okay, I'm going to stamp on this and see how it comes out. Ha ha. My luck today has not been good, so let's see what happens here. I'm rubbing down pretty hard just because I normally wouldn't rub this hard, but because I've had such bad luck today, I'm going to rub real hard and pull it up. And there you go. I'm going to pull this up here. And there's my stamped image of the face. And I can add to that as I need to. So I can add, I can draw over it, I can use this just as a background, I can color in sections, there's all sorts of things I can do with the stamp. So I just wanted to show off what I've been doing as far as creating stamps. Um, not and I've used these stamps in various projects. So I am glad that I was able to share these things with you. Um, in my video on making stencils, I showed this project and I used a stamp to initially put the face down and then I drew over the stamp. And the, and the background is all stencil using the background is all stencil using uh, various uh, stencils that I made. And I think it's jelly printed using stencils on a jelly printed paper, on a jelly plate and printing from that. So, that's what I want to show you today. One last thing I do want to, I'm going to do this face real quick to show you the difference here. This is the face where I I didn't cut out the design. I actually just drew in the design with my craft knife and my and you'll see okay, hold it still. I drew in the design using my craft knight and my uh, ballpoint pen. And you'll see that the face design does show up. And even the uh, swirls in the hair show up when you do use that technique. So that's what I have to show you. Thanks for watching.